Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Stebbing. Today it's time to do another pattern out of my book, Simple Quilts from the Modern Home. We're going to be sewing through one quilt in the book each month this year. We're working on our second quilt and this one is Houndstooth. I really like it because it's an alternate grid setting so the focus of it all is kind of going into an upper corner which also means it would be really easy to alter the size of it and you would just keep the blocks in the upper corner the same and then you would just make it smaller um, according to however you need it to be. This one is a rather large quilt so you probably don't need to reduce it at all in size. Um, it's probably as big as it needs to be but you could easily make it smaller. I have a lot of fun choosing fabrics for this. I kind of was thinking of a teen girl when I was picking fabrics and I was looking online at what are the popular colors for home decor and that's the fun part of doing a quilt is that we're not always doing it for us, we're doing it for somebody else and so what may not be our taste may be really like the most best thing for somebody else. And I found these really pretty, they're considered basics, uh, meaning that they're blender fabrics to where they don't really steal the show. They give you your color, but they don't detract from anything so that way you can focus on the design rather than the crazy print that's in it. And so we've got these available at the shop and we're gonna have kits as well, um, as long as they're printing the fabric. And it's really fun, really pretty, and I just love working with Art Gallery fabrics because their fabrics are so soft and silky and they drape really nicely when they're quilted. So the construction method for this is really similar to what we did last month in Going North. That's why the groups or the quilts were grouped together in the book um, in terms of strip piecing and then cutting down in tasks or triangles, but it is different, so we're gonna go over that. Just like all of the videos that feature quilts from the book, uh, we are gonna go over how to put it together and it's meant to be supplemental to the book. So we're not gonna give you any cutting instructions or you know any the numbers you're supposed to create or anything like that. Um, that is all in the book. And if you enjoy getting these videos for free, we encourage you to support us and help continue to bring you free videos by when you see a project you like and give it a go, you buy it from us. And if you get the book from us, I will sign it personally and we'll get it off in the mail to you. So let's get started. So in each of these, I'm pairing them with just a white background. Your background doesn't have to be white, but I chose white in this case so that the fabrics would really contrast with the, uh, that white bright white background but if you live in a home where white just isn't a possibility feel free to change up the colors and have your own fun with it the fun of this is that the colors kind of blend out they go from dark to light in both the fuchsia and plum to the teal and turquoise as well so think of that think of two colors that are complementary to each other and try to fan that out or you could go rainbow lots of options so i'm going to start by sewing some Scant quarter inch seams. I like to sew a scant quarter inch seam whenever I'm doing strip piecing. Not a must have, but I like it because then I just have a little bit more wiggle room when it comes time to trim down and that just works better for me. But if you just wanna sew a regular quarter inch seam and you don't wanna fuss with that, perfectly fine, up to you. So my white is a solid, so there isn't really a right side, but if you were using a print, you would wanna pair them right sides together. There is no need to pin when you are strip piecing. You just need to keep your edges nice and even. If they get off, that's when you get a seam that's too skinny and it might pop open with use and time. What I just do is I just line this fabric up with the edge of my presser foot, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and sew down. And a lot of times people get really concerned with like all of this being even and that's not necessary um, to get that all pinned up ahead of time or worry about it. Well, I just worry about whatever is gonna fit on the throat of my sewing machine. So what I'll do is I'll lay down it right on top there and then I just put my fingertips on top of it and I just let that guide forward. And when my fingers hit the tip, then it's time to repeat that process. So go ahead and do that and sew your strips together and then we'll come back for pressing. Now you can chain piece these and that will really help speed up the process of doing this quilt. What you're gonna do is without breaking thread, you're just going to grab your next piece and get it ready to go and just feed it right on in and you'll just have a couple of stitches in between and you'll clip those threads when you're all done and that way you can just keep on sewing. 
and you can just strip away. That's why they call it strip quilting or strip piecing. Now more and more, I prefer to press my seams open rather than to one side. I think it really helps make for really perfect points and it helps your quilt lie really flat, which opens up a lot of possibilities when it comes to quilting. To do that, what you do is you're just gonna open up your seam and then I like to put three or four fingers right down on that seam and it kind of is like a finger press that opens it up a little bit. And then you just keep the nose of your iron right down that center seam and just make sure you don't get your fingers with the iron. That would not be good. So it should be nice and straight like this. You shouldn't see any wiggles in it. If there is a wiggle, it means there's a pleat on the other side. So I'm gonna finish pressing this strip. When you're all done, I also like to get it from the front side. And then that way I can make sure it's super, really duper flat. So go ahead and press your seams open. Then we're gonna cut, trim, and we are almost ready to finish this block up. Told you it was fast. Now here comes the fun part. We're going to use our regular six by 24 inch ruler to cut this out. So no special templates or rulers needed for this. Now, the majority of rulers are gonna have these marks where you have 15, 30, 45, and 60 degree, and then also 90 in this one on it. This is a frosted um, ruler by Ulfa. It's my preferred one, but Fiskars also has it. So most of the rulers have these markings on it. The one we're gonna use today is the 45 degree mark, and that's what we're gonna use to make sure that we have a nice straight curve here when we cut. All right, so here's what makes this fun and easy. We're gonna take that 45 degree line of our ruler, and we're gonna line it right up on that seam line. And I'm gonna get it as far over as I can without going into the selvage. Once I've got everything where it should be, I'm just going to cut right down the side there. And remove that piece. Then I'm gonna flip the ruler. And it takes a little bit of getting used to when you start flipping it because you keep going sort of backwards and forwards here. And now I'm gonna line it up again with that seam line, that 45 degree line, but I want the top of my ruler on the top right to be even with the tip of that triangle that I just created. So once I've got that in place, and I've still got my 45 degree line on the seam line there, then I'm free to cut. So now we've created our first triangle. Again, it's really similar to what we did in going north because then when we flip this around here, we're going to continue doing this all the way down. So this time the tip is going to be on the bottom and it will keep doing that as you work your way down the strip set. So we got that ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna keep working my way down this strip set until all of these are cut. One thing that's really important, and we go over this in the book, is that you are gonna end up with an odd number of triangles when you do this. So you're going to have more of the ones that you start with than the ones that are in the second bit. So you can see you've got opposite triangles. This one has a long piece that is from your print fabric, and then it's reverse on this one but you need to have the same amount of triangles when you're all done. So you just have to think about it. So we're gonna pretend for a second that this fabric is the same color as this one. And just pretend, obviously it isn't. But when you cut your second strip set, what you wanna do is instead of starting the same direction like we did with this one, we cut up first. And so then you would end up with the, again, too many of these and not enough of these. What you wanna do is flip your ruler, like this, and you're gonna first do your first cut where it's going on the downward. That way, this is not an ideal way to cut, but it'll work for now. When I flip it over, my first triangle is gonna be reverse of the first triangle I got in the other one. All right, so now I've cut two triangles from each of them, and you can see that in this one where I started on that downward, I've got the point of it is the print, and in this case where I cut upward first, the 
print is the big one and the background is that way. So basically they're opposite. So in this one, I'm gonna have one extra of this type of piece. And in this one, I'm going to have one extra of this type of piece. But if they were all from the same color, then I would have equal amounts after I've cut two strips. I hope that's clearer as mud. Um, but if you have the book, then it is laid out in a diagram. It shows you really clearly what you have to cut. So go grab the book and it will be super clear, but I just wanted to make sure I went over that so you know that you have to cut one strip where you start going up with the triangle and the second strip where you cut going down so that you get the right amount of the different types of triangles since they are reverse of each other. All right, so go ahead and finish cutting. I'm gonna show you how to sew these guys together next. So here's where it gets a little bit different than what we did in going north. Rather than sewing it to a solid triangle, we have two strip triangles and which ones go with each other is, there's a lot of combinations, but they're all listed out really clearly along with how many you need of each one in the instructions in the book. So grab that and you'll be able to put it together. Now, y'all know I don't really like to pin that much, but this is a case where I am gonna pin just to make sure that I have everything nice and in line. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip these guys right sides together. First, I'm gonna line up those points because I wanna make sure that those are together. Otherwise, you're gonna have a wonky block when it's all done. And then I'm gonna line up my points here and pin on the sides. And really that's all, because this is a not a biased edge. It is a straight of grain edge. So this shouldn't do too much stretching on you. It's not like sewing a traditional triangle together. In this case, your edges are gonna be on the outside of your block. So we're gonna put a pin here and here, and then we're gonna sew together. I like to keep using my scant corner seam when I'm sewing my triangles together. That's a personal preference up to you. I like it because it gives me a little bit extra wiggle room when we're gonna trim this down a little bit. So I just keep that pin in place long enough to get it underneath the presser foot, and then I remove it so that way I don't hit the pin when I'm sewing. You can chain stitch all of these to make it go really fast. I'm just gonna get one block together for today's video because once you know how to do one, you can do all of them. I'm gonna press this seam open as well for all the same reasons I pressed the other one. I feel like it lays very nice and flat when you do this. And you can really do some fun things with quilting because you don't have the extra bulk of the seam being folded over. Do just be careful that you don't accidentally flip another seam going the other way. So when I'm done, I'm gonna go ahead and press from this side as well. All right, so we've got the block, but we've got one final step in order to make sure that this quilt goes together perfectly, and that's trimming it down. You don't wanna skip this step because then your quilt is gonna be lumpy and bumpy, and trust me, I learned from experience, you wanna start with blocks that are all the same size so that it goes together perfectly. So the six and a half inch square is perfectly fine for this. I can't find mine, so I'm using my larger one. But what you wanna do whenever you're trimming something down is you want to first get your 45 degree line even with that seam allowance. And then you wanna make sure that the parts of the block are hanging past the measurement you need to cut by. So they're gonna be hanging across the top and the side, and then also past the measurement as well. So once you've got everything where you want it to be, then you can just give it a little trim going up and over, flip it 180 degrees around. So now our cut edges are on the side and the bottom. And we're gonna repeat the process, except this time we're gonna start by getting that 45 degree line just like before. And then I'm lining the edges up exactly on the measurement I need to cut to, and then give it another little trim. And you might find that one side is bigger than another. That's just because we're trimming on the bias and the bias can move and stretch a little bit on you. And that can be a bad thing, it can also be a good thing. So in this case, there's a lot of wiggle room. You can really easily trim it down. And as long as you are making sure that that 45 degree line is going down the center, this is gonna work out perfectly for you because your points are always gonna go to your points. Now, in some cases, 
these edges are gonna match up with a triangle, but these edges are biased, which means they're gonna stretch a little bit on you and you can always give it a little tension if you need to in order to get those sewn together perfectly. So when you sew this together, you are always, almost always, going to be sewing it to a square piece of fabric, which means you're going to have a bias edge next to a straight of grain edge, which is going to stabilize it really well. In the instances in which you have to sew these together, that bias is going to work in your favor because say these didn't end up in exactly the same spot from block to block, that's okay. You can go ahead and pin them in place, give it a little tension as you're sewing, like I showed you in the going north video, and it'll still sew together just fine. I'm gonna stop here because at this point, it's just putting together a quilt top. If you are a true beginner and you need help on how to put together a quilt top, we have a free beginner quilting video tutorial series you can watch. There are lots of lessons. There's 12 different lessons all the way from the stuff you need all the way to care for your quilt at the end. You get a free pattern with it, but we have a lesson that's specifically on putting together your quilt top. So if you need help with that, go check it out. You can see it, it's right at the top of our, um, screen on our YouTube channel, or you can go to quiltaddictsanonymous.com backslash learn to quilt and just scroll down. All the videos are on there and you can watch the one on how to assemble a quilt top. Thanks so much for following along with this week's video. I am so excited to finally have this book out in the world and I love that you guys are loving it too. I hope you give this one a go. It's really fun. It's really easy to change up those fabrics because there's not a ton to work with. And so you can really have some confidence with that. We do have kits as long as our gallery continues to make the fabric. It's super fun to work with. Very silky, it's one of the silkiest cotton, quilting cottons I've ever worked with. And I really love the way it washes and wears. Again, all the instructions for this, as well as the layout diagrams and how many pieces of each one you need in each color are available in my book, Simple Quilts from the Modern Home, and the pattern is Houndstooth. It's the second quilt in the book, which means it's pretty much the second easiest, almost. Um, we kind of arrange them from easiest to hardest in the book. So that way, if you are a true newbie, you can get started with the easier ones and then work your way up and build your skills. And you can also just try out some new things too. If you've never cut triangles this way from strips, maybe you'll love it and maybe you'll get addicted to it. It's super fun, it's super fast. Well, thanks so much for following along. Get the book if you want to make this and I'll sign the copy for you. You can get it over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. We've linked it and all the supplies that we use in the video today in the description box down below. And until next week, happy quilting.